why we must pray. Because number one, prayer is an important part of our lives as Christians. Prayer is an important part of our lives. Number two, because prayer is a privilege. Every moment of prayer is an investment in eternity. Prayer is a privilege. Number three, why we must pray. The scripture enjoins us to pray without seasoning. Without season. Not seasoning, right? Well, with seasoning. You can add seasoning to your prayer. <laughs> Praise God. The scripture enjoins us to pray. Number four, prayer helps to season our spirits as a, dis, as a dependable receptacle for God's spirit and power. It helps us season our spirits even as we receive from God, pretty much. It helps us season our spirits. We're doing this quickly so we can move on from here. Number five, why we must pray. Prayer makes tremendous power available. It makes tremendous power available. Why you and I must pray. Why it is essential that we spend time in prayer. What number are we in now? Number six, prayer is a form of fellowship. Prayer is a form of fellowship. Number seven, prayer is a legal transaction. Prayer is what? I can't hear you. Prayer is what? Prayer is a legal transaction. Man argues his case before the judge in the high court of heaven. And I feel in order for us to continue, it's important we understand that the spiritual realm really plays a massive part in understanding what happens in the spiritual realm. And let me just take us through a journey so that all of us can all meet together. There are two realms God created in the beginning. The physical realm and the spiritual realm. Are we all together? God created two realms. The physical realm and the spiritual realm. Romans chapter 1 verse 20. Romans chapter 1 verse 20. The Bible says, For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything he made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities. They can clearly see from the things that you can see on earth. It's proof of the things that you cannot see. For there to have been something that created all of this, there must have been someone that created all of this. So there must be a world that is outside from the world that we see. There is a spiritual world that we cannot see. We can see the physical world. But there is a spiritual world. There is an invisible realm called the spiritual world that you and I cannot see. The physical realm is where we live. The spiritual realm is the realm that we do not see. It's the invisible realm. And I want us to go together. We're getting somewhere. Because I want us to understand this foundational part first. Before we take a bit, a step further. And at the end of this series, if you have questions, we'll take questions at the last Sunday. And answer every question anyone, can, anyone has. Praise God. So how many realms are there? There is the physical and the spiritual realm. You all know about the physical realm, so I'm not going to spend time talking about that. Prayer is a spiritual activity, so we need to understand what happens in the spiritual realm. In the spiritual realm, there are two kingdoms. In the spiritual realm, there are how many kingdoms? There are two kingdoms. Colossians chapter 1. The scriptures are going to be up on the screen. You can write them down as your reference. We'll read them. You get the understanding of them, and then we move forward. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. Let's read from verse 13. It says, For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness. From what kingdom? And transferred us into what kingdom? 
How many kingdoms are referenced there? There are two kingdoms. There is the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of his dear son. So there is the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God, you can call it. So it's important that these two kingdoms are all part of what? The spiritual realm. In the spiritual realm, you have the kingdom of darkness and you then have the kingdom of God. Both kingdoms are resident in the spiritual realm. Prayer is powerful irrespective of the kingdom. Prayer is a spiritual activity. Irrespective of what kingdom you want to communicate with, prayer is essential. Prayer is essential. And many people think that because we probably don't see the manifestations of the kingdoms on the earth or in the physical realm, it means they don't exist. Maybe many have assumed that because we don't see the manifestation of the kingdoms on this earth, it means they don't exist. But the fact that you don't see them or you don't believe them doesn't mean that they don't exist. If the scripture tells us that there are two kingdoms, we must understand that there are two kingdoms that exist in a spiritual realm that is invisible. Praise the living Jesus. And prayer is an essential part of that. Prayer is an essential part of that. One of the methods of success that the kingdom of darkness uses is ignorance. He keeps people in ignorance to hide the fact that it exists. And once you don't know that there is such a kingdom, it's easy for you to believe that it doesn't exist. God has given us prayer as a way to step into the spiritual realm to be able to get things that we want. Because the physical realm is a shadow of the spiritual realm. There are many things that we see here in the physical. It's literally just a shadow. And the more we teach, I will show you many things and examples of things that I'm talking about. The physical realm is a shadow of the spiritual realm. Meaning that for you to, sometimes a lot of things that happen in the physical realm is as a result of something that has happened in the spiritual realm. Are we all together? Are we following this, please? Because when you understand that truly to really see something and take hold of it in the physical, sometimes you need to go to the spiritual to actually take hold of it first in the spiritual realm before it gets manifested in the physical. This is where prayer comes in. Prayer is an access and a way for us to get ourselves from this physical world that we're in, step into the spiritual world and get access or gain something that we want. When we don't know how to do this, sometimes we're a lot, we're a bit confused or perplexed as to why things are happening and why we can't change things. But what if there was an invisible realm that we haven't touched yet? Maybe there's an invisible realm that we haven't seen yet. And we're trying to do the things that we see. Meanwhile, there's a realm that we don't see that controls the things that we see. I've shared a story and given this illustration. Jesus is in a boat with his disciples. And there's a storm. Do we remember the story? There's a massive storm. The Bible said that water was getting into the boat. The disciples take the bowl and they are trying to pour the water away. When you read the story, they are taking the bowl and pouring the water away. They are trying to get rid of the water, but it's not working. So they go and tap Jesus. Master, don't you care that we die? Aren't you bothered? Jesus gets up and he goes to the front of the boat. And What did the Bible say that Jesus did? The Bible said that he commanded the what? He commanded what? He commanded what? Somebody, some people say he commanded the sea. Some say he commanded the boat. Some say he commanded the water in the boat. <laughs> he spoke to the wind and spoke to the storm. 
they, they never crossed the mind of the disciples that there was a storm or a wind that was causing it. What they felt was the water that they could see they were trying to sort out. Jesus came and he didn't speak to the water. He didn't tell them or give them strength to be able to take the water out of the boat quicker. He didn't tell them or give them a strategy on how to take out the water. What was the real issue had nothing to do with what they could see. He comes and he rebukes the wind, something that they could not see. Let me tell you, there are challenges that we cannot see that are causing the, rea or the challenges that we can see. There is a spirit realm that if we knew how to get access and speak in that spirit realm, the things that we see will be sorted. When Jesus spoke to the storm, what happened? It stopped. The Bible never told us that they cleared the water after that. The boat was okay. The boat was normal. He spoke to what they could not see so that what they could see will be sorted. What the teaching we're doing this month about the art of prayer is how to speak to the things that we cannot see so that the things that we can see will be sorted. That is the legal art of prayer. The ability to be able to speak to what you cannot see so that that which you can see will be aligned with the will of God for your life. Bible tells us in Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Luke chapter 10 verse 19, the Bible tells us. Now behold, I give you authority to trample on sapients and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. Over all the power of the enemy. So the kingdom, both kingdoms in the spiritual realm do have power. Never think that any of those kingdoms are powerless. They do have what? Power. Understand it. They do have power. And the same way in the physical realm, we have order of things. There is an order of things in the spiritual realm as well. Things don't just happen haphazardly. Things don't happen disorderly. There is a part of the teaching we're going to get into, which is the legal framework of the spirit realm. There is also a legal framework of the spirit realm where cases are brought before a court and it is judged. And a verdict is given and whatever verdict is given there has an effect here. You know, I said this is not a foundational teaching of prayer. Praise the living Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. But God will have us understand these things. God wants you and I to understand these things. God doesn't want to raise children who all they can do is just be shouting amen at every breakthrough prayer. God wants to raise men and women of war. People who can stand on and make a decree. And then that decree is acknowledged in the spirit realm. God wants you to be a person who understands his authority. Understands your authority and your place as a believer. So that when you rise up to make a statement, you know how to approach the spirit realm, make a decree, and see it established in your life. Praise the living Jesus. We take a look at the story of Daniel. A story that we possibly all know. Daniel is saying a prayer over his nation. And the Bible reveals something amazing to Daniel. The Bible comes and shows Daniel that, hold on a second, there was a spirit being that was over that city, over that nation. Sometimes we feel that if Daniel had spent his time praying for the removal of King Nebuchadnezzar, another king would have come in and that problem would have persisted. Because the problem was not what he could see. The spirit, the angel comes to Daniel in Daniel chapter 10. And the angel says to Daniel, that look, there is a prince that I was fighting with. That prince is the person in charge of this land. It's not the king. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. The point I'm trying to explain to you is this. There are things that are unseen that control things that are seen. If that king had gone and another king had come, it's still the same prince. Until that prince was defeated, it didn't matter who was the ruler of that land. 
The person is a puppet who is subject to the characteristic of the prince in the spirit realm that has been put over that land. Praise the living Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. Daniel had to stand up and actually stand on his authority in Christ. If Daniel had not prayed that prayer or spent time praying that prayer, maybe situation may never have changed. Maybe there would have been no change in the spirit realm. Have you encountered certain circumstances in your life? And honestly, if you would rise up and say enough is enough. If you would rise up and say, look, I'm tired and fed up of this particular situation. I will not have it any longer. Maybe it's a challenge in your family and you've seen it time and time again. And God is saying to you, if you would rise up and take hold and honestly say enough is enough. I would not have this continue in my home. You can change the authority in the spirit that you would see be manifested in the physical. Make up your mind and determine in your heart. God has given us this genuine privilege of being able to step into the spiritual realm and make decrees. Step into the spiritual realm and tap into things. Step into the spiritual realm and make clear confirmations that would make physical changes in your world. You see a family and suddenly the mother and the daughter just don't get on anymore. It's a fight every single time. Randomly. Once upon a time they were close. But now they even swear at each other. What if it's not a physical problem? What if in the place of prayer that thing, that situation can be changed? What if in the place of prayer that whole circumstance can be turned around? It would take one person to actually stand up and say to themselves, it's not about Daniel going to find a prophet to, for the prophet to pray over the land. It's about someone who will stand up and say, you know what, I've had enough of this. Is that discomfort I want to put in your heart? Because some of us have seen certain circles or patterns in our life and honestly I say to you, if you would rise up and say to yourself, enough is enough. I will not have this go on in my life anymore. I would not have this go on in my family anymore. Is there a health challenge that you have? Rise up and honestly say to yourself, enough is enough. Determine in your heart that you would not have it linger on anymore. Determine in your heart that you would not have it stay anymore in your home. God is looking for people who would rise up. The Bible tells us that creation is waiting for the manifestation of the children of God. What does he do while he's waiting? It's groaning. It's in pain. Why? Because the children of God have not stood up to actually take their place. They've not stood up to actually start acting in the right place that God has placed them in. Do you understand what I'm saying? Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 10. He said, I've seen an evil under the sun. What evil had he seen under the sun? He says, I see princes walking on barefoot. I see servants riding on horses. He says, don't you see that these princes were made to actually ride on horses? They were meant for a specific position. But they didn't take it. Why? Because they didn't know. They didn't know. That there was a place God had placed for them. They didn't know that there was a place God had placed for them. They didn't know that there was a position that they were meant to occupy. But they walked in ignorance. And all they did was they just cried to God. That God please take me out of here. Let me tell you something. Tears is not a spiritual legal tender. What did I say? Tears are not a, a valid spiritual legal tender. What did I say? I want you to say it so that it gets in. It's not a valid spiritual legal tender. We will talk about spiritual legal tenders. A tender is something you do what? A legal tender is what? You exchange something for something else, isn't it? Yes, you can cry to God. And out of his sovereignty, because he created both worlds, both realms, and both kingdoms, he can rise up in his infinite mercy and make a change. But God does not expect you to be doing that all the time. You can have one of the children here who goes to cry to their mom that they want ice cream. 
But the mom has said to them, there are no ice cream on Sundays. But they go and cry to the mom, and they are wailing so much. Now, what does the, the mom came up with the rule. The mom came up with the order. But maybe a particular Sunday, they wail so much that the mom just says, okay, you know what? You can have it. Does that mean that child can come and be doing that every single time? The mom won't give the child. There's also a particular point where the mom expects that the child would have grown up to a particular level where the boy doesn't come now to be crying for ice cream every single time because he understands the order of things. You can see a 20-year-old boy running to the mother asking him for ice cream. You expect him to have understood the order of things. So there is a place where God can take a look at those tears and out of his infinite mercy and sovereignty, he comes and he grants you what you want. But don't you think that that is a spiritual, a valid spiritual legal tender? There is a way to approach the presence of God. There is a constitution that the spiritual world goes by. What does the constitution say about my circumstance? What does the constitution say about my situation? Find what the constitution says and go into the place of prayer with what it says in there. It's a more valid way of getting what you want than just crying, God, please. God, I beg. God will have us rise and take our place. The change that you've wanted in your home so much. You're one prayer away from that change. You're a prayer away from the change that you've wanted in your home, in your family, in your health. Get uncomfortable with where you are. Get uncomfortable with the devil just having a field day in your life. Get uncomfortable. Get uncomfortable with the devil having a field day in your family. Get uncomfortable. Lock yourself up in the place of prayer. Lock yourself up in the place of prayer. I shared this with a few people some days where I said, when God was having fellowship with Adam, in the beginning, God was having fellowship with Adam, right? One day, Adam didn't show up. God came and God asked, where are you? God did not ask Adam, how are you? What did he ask Adam? He asked Adam, where are you? He didn't ask Adam, how are you? Some of us, the reason why we stopped going in the place of prayer is because we're tired. You're tired, you're stressed, you're sleepy. That's why God didn't ask Adam, how are you? Because irrespective of how he felt, Adam was required to come to that place of fellowship every single day. You're tired? Go into the place of prayer tired. You're stressed? Go in there stressed. You're feeling anxious? Go in there feeling anxious. You're, you're overwhelmed? Go in there overwhelmed. Prayer is an opportunity for fellowship. And honestly speaking, go in there however it is you feel. And then go and tell God how you feel in there. But don't not go there because of how you feel. Because when it comes to fellowship and to prayer, it doesn't matter how you feel. God still wants you to show up. Adam had sinned, had broken a law. God still came. It wasn't Adam that went to God to say, oh God, I've sinned. Despite the fact that God knew Adam had sinned, God still came to fellowship with him. You feel guilt in your heart for what you've done? Still go back there. Carry the guilt and go back to that same place. You feel ashamed? Go to the place of prayer ashamed. You go and talk here with God. It's not a how are you feeling? Oh, I'm sleepy so I couldn't do it. Oh, I was tired so I couldn't do it. Oh, I had a long day at work so I couldn't do it. Find a way. Say, Lou, you know what? God, I am tired, I am annoyed, I am stressed, but I'm here. I am what? Here. Prayer can change your life. Prayer can give you the life that you want. Let me tell you, it can set you far beyond your imagination and expectation. Many a times we want to do the in Jesus' name, amen, plus God minus Satan prayer and then just move on. <laughs> you know that prayer? But there's a deeper realm to that of fellowship. You see, I read so much about Moses. I really love Moses, my favorite character in the Bible. 
There's a reason why I love him. Because Moses understood the staying power. I call it the staying power. It's the ability to go into the presence of God and stay. You don't stay because you're hearing anything. You don't stay because you're feeling any way. But you stay because it's the sweet fellowship. Let me show you something in Exodus. Praise God. Our time is running so fast. Let me show you something in Exodus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Someone is blessed this afternoon. For someone here, your life will never remain the same again. Your life will never remain the same again. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Exodus chapter 24. We're going to read it together. I want you to understand that by this point, God and Moses had become besties. They had become what? They were good friends. Pretty much say they were good friends. God called Moses by name. There's a way they interacted. There was a way they communicated. And there's a time God says to Moses, oh, come up a mountain. You know, that's how they used to speak. Why don't you come and visit me? God gave Moses a special invitation. But there was something amazing that I found out. Because sometimes we think that even these guys in the Old Testament, maybe God just spoke to them, you know, so quickly. That they never really had to linger or stay in his presence. Exodus 24. Let's read from verse 14. Read from verse 14. I want us to all see it together. Can we all see it? Moses told the elders, Stay here. Wait for us until we come back. Aaron and her are here with you. If anyone has a dispute while I am gone, consult with them. So he's leaving them now. Verse 15 says, then Moses climbed up the mountain and the cloud covered it. Verse 16. And the glory of the Lord settled down on Mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, the Lord called out to Moses from inside. On what day? On what day? On what day? Moses had been there six days. Nothing. It's God that told him to come. Six days, Moses has been waiting. He had no instruction. He had no order. He had no nothing. Moses just stayed there six days. He had gone on the second day. That's the end. He had gone on the third day. That would have been it. Practice staying in the presence of God. Stay there. Learn to just stay there. I believe the main reason why many of us don't hear God is honestly because we just don't know how to just stay there. Just stay. Stay. And you have to practice it. You can practice being in the presence of God. Because if you haven't done it, you would need to make your flesh get used to it. Your flesh is not going to want to do it. Your flesh is going to get tired. You know, sometimes you want to pray and you start remembering all the things that you want to do. <laughs> all the people that you ought to message that you've not messaged. Everything on your to-do list that you've not done, you start remembering it. And suddenly you're like, oh, let me swipe on my Instagram or whatever. You get a bit distracted. And we've honestly not just learned the staying power, the ability to just go in the presence of God. And just stay there. Six days, he had nothing. He didn't think to himself, maybe I'm wasting my time. Did I get it wrong? Did I come at the wrong time? Practice staying in the presence of God. Don't let your, the voice of your flesh be louder than the voice of your spirit. What did I say? Don't let the voice of your flesh be louder than the voice of your spirit. Your flesh is going to be crying out something to you. You ought to leave this place. You ought to go. You ought to go call this person. You ought to go do all of these things. But there's something your spirit man is crying out for. Your spirit man cries out to linger in that presence. Your spirit man cries out to stay in the presence. Your spirit man is crying out for you to linger there a bit more. I redefine prayer. You know, we talk about how prayer is communicating with God. 
But I genuinely believe that prayer is time spent with God. It's just time spent there. Because when you have fellowship with someone, it's not every time that both of you speak. Sometimes you just want to enjoy them being there. So they are there. And you guys are not really saying anything. But you're just happy they are there. Do you have friends like that? You just go to the house and you're, there's nothing, you're not really saying anything, but you guys are just, you're just there. They're happy you're there, you're happy they are, they are there, but nobody's saying anything. That's the end of it. And you guys are having a brilliant time in silence. <laughs> and that's the way it is with God. It's prayer to you. God just, he just wants us there. God, I'm just here for you. Whether you have worship playing on, anything, you're just enjoying that sweet presence. You're enjoying the sweet presence. Nothing being said. You're not hearing anything from him. I believe that's how it was with Moses and he just stayed there. The Bible said the cloud came down. God hadn't said anything. But he was just, and he was having a blissful time. He was having an amazing time. time spent with God and it's enjoyable and you can practice it. You can do what? Practice it. You can practice it. You can practice it. You can practice it. The song I love by a music minister, Dunsin, and he sang a song and I really love a lyric in that song. It says, when the glory comes, there will be no words to say. There's no words. What is it? Just enjoying the sweet presence. There's nothing to, you don't need to talk. Maybe we've been taught so much that when you are in the place of prayer, you must always be shouting and be talking to God. And if your mouth is shut, then it means that there's, there's nothing happening. There is a place to speak, but there's also a place to be silent. Go and watch the sermon series, The Power and the Presence of God. We spoke about the silence the silent presence of God. Yeah, I'm giving you a plug. YouTube channel, Royal Tribe Church. You, we have an entire series on that. Praise the living Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. This is the heart God will have for you and I. This is the heart God will want us to have. Don't play with your spirit, your prayer life. Don't pray. Don't play with your prayer life. You can create the life you want in prayer. You can attain all God has for you in prayer. You can avoid stories that touch in prayer. You can avoid stories that touch in prayer. I think my sister was sharing the other day about how she got a score in her MBA. And she went and wrote the, <laughs> the lecturer's name down and took it to midnight prayers. He changed it from 41 to 71. What did I say? Continue playing. The life that you want can be created in prayer. Yes, get your CV all set and ready. But pray. A friend of mine was sharing. Her boss, her manager in the office was sharing with her He has, I'm not sure if it's two or three children. They are in their teens now. From the moment they hit age one, he starts teaching them how to give incense to their gods. Do you understand what I'm saying? One of the most potent spiritual legal tenders that we will talk about is sacrifice. It works both in the kingdom of God and in the kingdom of darkness. Understand what I'm trying to tell you. not speaking about any other countries, the one that we are all in. In your workplace, determine in your heart. You don't know what other people are doing. They are, they are laying sacrifices. I would have showed you a story in the Bible, but we leave that. Where a king went and made a sacrifice and he started winning against the, the children of Israel. 
because of his sacrifice. So this thing works. It's not only in the kingdom of God it works, let me tell you. The people in the kingdom of darkness understand what sacrifice is and the effect of it. God will have us understand these things now, honestly. I don't want us to come here and be people who are ignorant of these things. When you pray, you need to understand what you're doing in the spirit realm. When you pray, you need to understand what you're doing in the spirit realm. You need to understand what you're doing in the spirit realm. God will not have us to be ignorant. Pray. If you're trying to build a habit of prayer, I've said it many times, join other people that are praying so that you are able to then build up that habit yourself. Once you build up the habit, ensure you sustain the habit by going into your personal time and building and sustaining the habit. But don't just go around and think, you know, life is just going to happen to you. No, it wouldn't. It really wouldn't. <laughs> it really, really wouldn't. You know, I, I had an encounter once that shook me to the core. I had an encounter once that shook me to the core. Changed my life forever. Completely changed my life forever. I had a dream. So when this thing happened, I believe I shared it with Pastor Shego there because I was not normal. And he came to me one day and said, what's wrong with you? I said, my life has not been the same some weeks ago. I had a dream one day. And in the dream, I went to a university hostel. And I stood in front of the hostel and... I was waiting for someone, and next thing I knew, Bishop Oedipo came in. Don't record this bat. <laughs> Bishop Oedipo came in. And I knew he was the one I was waiting for. And we walked into the hostel together. We had come to do some spiritual work on some girls. And there were four girls that, that sat there on a table. And I followed him behind. And he literally went to the first girl and said, in the name of Jesus, I cast you out. And that one passed out. And she was okay. And he went to the second one. I said, in the name of Jesus, I cast you out. And that one passed out. And she was okay. And so he went to the third one. And so he was about to do something for the third one. But he pointed to me that I should do the same thing for the fourth one. While he does the same thing for the third one. So I carried myself too. <laughs> you know the way the story is going. It's funny now. I carried myself to and went to the fourth lady. I've seen him do it for the first, the second, exactly as he spoke it. I did not add a comma. A, a, the way he said it in his breath, I said it in the exact same way. Pointing with the exact same finger. Staring at her in the exact same way. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I cast you out. This girl stood up in the most violent way. And I went directly for me. She grabbed my neck, threw me on the floor. I was struggling, choking the life out of me. I said, why is it, why is it the most difficult one that they always give me? <laughs> I said, why didn't he give me the easy one to do? I was struggling. This is not, it's not a funny story. Choking my neck. I was, I was battling nothing I could do. I could not put, this, she was on top of me at this point in time. I could not push her away. Two hefty men had to come. To carry her and they chained her leg and her hand. At this point in time, I didn't know whether I should enter the floor or disappear. And he did for the third one and went to the fourth lady who was still on the floor and said the exact same thing. And she passed out and she was well. Ha! I said, nah. No, 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 no. There must be something. And so. We finished and we walked out. I was ashamed. When she held my neck, you need to understand, I was shouting Jesus. I used the Jesus I know, the blood of Jesus I know, the scripture of the name of Jesus, everything. And so we were walking out. And so I said to him, I said, sir, please help me. Why is it that I work for you? And he did not work for me. And then we went outside by a tree and he was telling me some things and I was writing it down. 
And then I woke up, and for weeks, I was not the same. It's not preaching or prayer that you tell me. The word I hear, it's not sermon I need. <laughs> I, when, when I woke up, I didn't need to hear sermon anymore. I know the life. I, I knew what I needed to build. There is a life that you can create in the place of prayer. There's an authority that is bestowed upon you. Listen, God loves everybody, but God does not trust everybody. Do you understand? Jesus loves me. This I know. Amazing. That's great. He loves you. Even those that will not make heaven, it's not that he did not love them. He loved them too. God loves everybody. But God is looking for people to trust. We're living in a very crazy dispensation in this nation now. And there are things that are happening in this nation that you may not know. But God wants to raise people who understand how to go to the place of prayer. People who can use the constitution of the Bible that he has given to us and lay claims. How can I go to the spirit realm and completely get what we want? Next week or the week after, we start looking at the spiritual legality. And then we'll take a look at spiritual legal tenders. And then the final Sunday, which is Easter Sunday, I believe, we'll take a look at understanding sacrifice. We'll spend some time talking about what sacrifice is and how impactful it is in the spiritual realm, how it works for the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God. And then we'll take a look at the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross. Let's rise on our feet. In order to walk in this life that God has destined for you and I, in order to walk in this life that God has destined for you and I, Thank you, Jesus. Let me say something. Sorry, hold on a second. There are ways that we give the enemy access to our lives. I didn't get to talk about it. But when it comes to a particular area, this goes for individuals, for homes, for cities, nations. We are the ones who often give access to the enemy. And there are three main gates in which we give the enemy access in our lives. Number one is the eye gate. The things you watch. The things that you let your eyes see. Number two is the ear gate. The things that you hear. And number three, is the mouth gate, the words that you speak. They are gates that the enemy uses to infiltrate your thoughts that can then influence your actions. Because he knows that for him to have a legal case in the spirit realm, you must have done something. That is what he takes to the court of heaven to say, look at what she did. And it is valid for him to do that. It is valid for him to do that. So we're going to sing and there's a prayer that I want us to pray. We are going to, by the blood of Jesus, seal off any gate that we have opened to the enemy. Whether it's through the, I don't know what you've let your eyes see. I don't know the place that you've taken yourself to. I don't know the place that you've taken yourself to. That you have made yourself see certain things. I don't know the place or the words, the place you have taken yourself to. That they've made you recite certain things. they made you to say certain things. Maybe it's to make an incantation. Maybe it's to make a declaration upon yourself that is not of God. Maybe you found yourself or maybe you had a dream. And in the dream, someone was making a declaration and a curse upon your life. 
And you stood there and it was getting onto you. It was getting into you. It was getting into you. We're going to close every gate. You will lift up your voice. This is your life. I am, this is not a corporate prayer. You choose not to, that's fine. But I pray that prayer myself that whatever way I've led the enemy through the things that I have seen, in the name of Jesus, I close that gate. Every way through the gate of my lips, the words of my lips have permitted the enemy to gain access to my life. Any way the things I've heard, any way my thoughts and my mind has been influenced, the fire of the Lord God Almighty consumes in the name of Jesus. The fire of the Lord God Almighty consumes. The fire of the Lord. You will seal the gates by the blood of the Lamb of Jesus. You will seal the gates with the blood of Jesus. These are deep spiritual prayers. These are deep spiritual prayers. Sarosh talingra asko pasale ke bagaraga. Ya te balonda shato la banda satelege. Legeronda zibra lando satara stonga rabaskato shaligale. La gosha ba. They are sealed in the name of Jesus. I seal, I seal, I seal. Rapon Bazaar. Every way I've given the enemy access to my life. Any way I've given the enemy access to my life. I revoke that access in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray. I revoke that access in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray. I revoke that access. You have the authority to revoke the access of the enemy in your life. You have the authority to revoke the access that the enemy has. Whatever way. Maybe you have dreams. Hold on a second. Maybe you're here or you're listening to me and you have dreams. Perverted dreams. It's access. We are dealing with some deep spiritual matters. Perverted dreams. It is access that you've given the enemy. You will revoke that access in the name of Jesus. Let's sing. You will revoke that access in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I revoke every access. In the name of Jesus, I revoke every access that the enemy has over my life. I revoke it. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. I didn't get a time to teach on this. So maybe we'll teach on this some other time. One of the ways to dethrone a prince, one of the ways to dethrone an authority of darkness is by fire. It happens by fire. You can dethrone an authority of darkness by fire. There are other ways that we can touch on. The Bible tells us in Psalm 104 verse 4, he says he's made his angel spirits and his ministers a what? A flame of fire. He has made his ministers a flame of fire. God was speaking to the children of Israel. He said in Leviticus chapter 6 verse 12, he said the fire of the altar shall keep burning. There's a reason the fire of the altar shall keep burning. Some of you here, you know that there is something and there's a place that God has called you to. You know your life is more than just coming here to just work, get a family, get children and then die. You pay bills and you know that's the end of your life. You know that there is something more that God has called you to do. 
you know that there's a deeper, there's something that oftentimes rises from your inner man. You know that there's a life that God has called you to, but you don't know anything about it. You can fan that flame, fan that flame. There's a fire of God that you're going to call to be ignited upon your life this afternoon. Yes, yes, yes. I want us to stir up that spirit. Let's stir it up. He said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Stir it up, stir it up. The fire of God, 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 the fire of God. The fire of God, 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 the fire of God. Satalendra Oshagaba Danelendros Kapishtaka. Someone needs to put their hand on their head and say, Every access the enemy has to my mind. I revoke that access in the name of Jesus. Maybe it's your thoughts you struggle with. Close that door. Close that door. Separ on the skish da kapata la sege. Ah, you know your thoughts are inconsistent with the will of God for your life. When the thoughts come, it is hard for you to take control of your actions. God did not create your mind to struggle with seasonal depression. God did not create your mind to struggle with seasonal depression. God did not create your mind to struggle with anxiety. I curse every foul spirit in the name of Jesus. Saronda sipa talo shatege Zetele ngarando zapatara gadanda zigado Zetolo braganda shatakade The fire of the Lord consumes The fire of the Lord consumes Anything not of God In the name of Jesus Zeto baranda zara laganda zale Zekataro de gabashando gobali Geto baranda satala gale shege bragando so baliga ba go patare de ge balinga bo shabala gaya karabalo go ye go sata ye go sata ya garabando so re patala satele ge bali ze barando go bala shoto go baki ke te te tere ba satala gara shagara gabalo re ko parara gabaye raga parare sheto kapasha taki Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Someone is going to leave this place today and you are, that fire is going to be burning in you. Don't quench it. Stir it up. As tired as you may be, as busy as you may be, as occupied as you may be, stir it up. The Bible says, give no place to the devil. Do you understand? He said what? Give no room. Give no room. Give no room to the devil. Give no, make it uncomfortable. He's going to try to come in in different ways. He says, give no room. Give no room to the devil. He tries in one way, you know it's blocked up. He tries in another way, you know it's blocked up. 
Don't permit him in any way. Went to a restaurant once. They started playing a certain kind of music. I got up. I said, turn that music off. My barbing saloon, they know me. They come. They when I come, there's this music they play. I'm not the only one there. There are other people in the saloon, in the barbing place. I, they will not play it when I'm there. Give no room to the devil. Any way he would use to access you, cut it off. I'm telling you. He's persistent and he will keep trying until he gets you. Watch even the books that you read. For some of you, there are TV shows you need to stop watching. There are TV shows you must stop watching. Listen to me. The storyline is interesting, I know. But you know that thing is not feeding your spirit right. For some, you need to take a break from social media because it's been distracting you from dwelling in God's presence. You know it's a distraction. You know it's a distraction. And you must take a break. I'm teaching the part two of this on Friday night. Not on Sunday. They will have a video. Heart cries on Friday. This Friday. 9 p.m. we're here. I'm teaching the part two of this sermon on Friday. So if we meet again on Sunday, you are not hearing the second part of the sermon by then. You would have missed a part of it. Because we have a vigil and Sunday service, we have an hour and a half, an hour 45, maybe, max, maybe two hours. But at vigil, we have eight hours and it's not just words. It is power and practical. That's what we're doing on Friday. That's what we're doing on Friday. There are things that God is going to be breaking. Patterns. There are patterns that God wants to break. There's an understanding that God wants us to have about prayer. So that when we understand it and have a greater understanding and we put it into practice, it has greater results. The disciples did not ask Jesus how to pray. Because they didn't know how to pray. They were Jews. It's their culture. They knew how to pray. But they saw someone praying <laughs> in a way that was inconsistent with their prayer. And the person was having results. The Bible said Jesus was casting out demons with a single command. Ah. They had to ask him, sir, please, how are you doing it? Then he taught them a pattern. Gave them an understanding so that they may get the same results. And after he sent them, they came to him rejoicing. He said, even the deaf hear. They were rejoicing. Why? Because they had an understanding of prayer that they had now put into practice. And it was, get, it was giving them results. There's an understanding that if we know and we put into practice, it will give us greater results. Friday, 9 p.m. We continue this series. If you need transport, coming from anywhere, whether going at the, when we're done at 3 a.m. Anyway, we will sort you out. It's more than any of that. I promise you, that's my promise. We will sort you out if you need transport coming or going. But please, not just that, bring people along as well. The word of God is not just in words, it is in power. And he said to the disciples that these signs will follow. Friday night we are here and it's going to be a time of power. Let me hear believing amen. It's going to be a time of what? Of power. We start next week Sunday a 21 day prayer. Prayer what should I call it? Prayer challenge. We want to call it a challenge. But we're praying from the 10th of March till the 30th of March which is 21 days. Not 20 days, that some of you might think. It is 21 days from the 10th of March to the 30th of March. We're going to be praying 11 p.m. to midnight. Um, and some of you need to write the challenge you want to be completely changed. We're talking about prayer. Let's see it work. We're not just here to say theory. We're here to see it be manifested. I'm the practical person. If it works, let me see it work. 
Don't just come and tell me about something. So we're praying on the 10th of March to the 30th of March. Uh, 11 p.m. to midnight. We start next week Sunday. Praise the living Jesus. Has someone been blessed in this place? Has someone been blessed today? Has someone been blessed today? Come on, put your hands together for Jesus and please be seated.